Hello everyone, how are you today? I'm doing a later broadcast today because I'm starting to get out a bit again and starting to mix with people and go out. It's been a tough one because, uh, you know, I was getting anxious with this silly lockdown and all that. I know it's all necessary stuff, but it's, it makes it hard when you're so used to being active and then not being so active, mixing with people I'm talking about. As you know, I've been working on the garden and I've been decorating the house, so I haven't been lazy or anything, but it just makes me feel anxious. But today, I overcome my anxiety. I went. I was able to speak to a few people and share uh, with them and help them and encourage them. So God is good. So for those who saw me today, it was... Uh, Great to see everybody down at the at the food share while they were sorting the food. While I was with helping Louise get the shop ready to open next week. So, you know, keep praying for us because God is going to do something miraculous and powerful in the days ahead. Although many other things are going on in the world that may be making us feel uncomfortable, a little bit disturbed by what we're seeing on the news. But yet we can trust in God. And, and I was going through today's reading and there's a bit in there that will encourage you and it says, God will look after those who are his and he will protect them, but he will lift them up even though there's trouble and turmoil in those lands and those difficulties that are going on around you. So today we're on Zechariah 11. I had a day off yesterday, but uh, you know, today we're back with it. So I'll pray the first and commit the time to God. Thank you, Lord, that we can study your word together. Thank you, Lord, that you're healing and restoring me. Lord, that I can minister to other people again, Lord, and build up my confidence again. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that I went through that so I can understand how we, how other people have been feeling and anxious and, you know, uncomfortable with meeting people and going back out again. But, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would... Strengthen those who are going through similar difficulties with their mental health, physical health issues, and those, Lord, who are suffering at this present time. Thank you, Lord, I was able to see old friends today, and that's been an encouragement, Lord, and uh, relating to their circumstances. I so thank you for those who volunteered today to take out full parcels to the many in need, um, the marauders, uh, whatever they call themselves, a group that came to volunteer to take out food today. And those who usually help, Lord, the whole team with Sally and, and all the people and all the workers that have been out there today working for you. So I thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful way you provided for Bethel Community Church and the many blessings that uh, we're having. So I thank you, Lord. And Lord, as we study your word today, help me to learn something more today about you. Help me to understand what you were saying to the churches today, but to, uh, you know, and be an encouragement to others today, in Jesus' name. Okay, guys, we read the chapter. Then I, I've been reading through the footnotes and different things, and it gives me a really good perspective of things. We might read some extra bits of scripture as well today. So if you've got your Bible ready and you'd like to follow along, I'm reading from Zechariah chapter 11. Open thy doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour thy cedars. Howl fir tree, for the cedar is fallen, because the mighty is spoiled. Howl, O yokes of Bashan, for the forest of the vintage has come down. There is a voice of howling of the shepherds, for their glory is spoiled, a voice of the roaring of young lions, for the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Does that doesn't sound, you know, very cool or very good, does it? You know, so let's look, verse 4 to 7 is talking about, let's look in some notes. In this message, God asks Zechariah to act out the roles of two different kinds of shepherds. The first shepherd was to demonstrate how God would reject his people, the sheep, because they rejected him. We read in that now as we continue in verse 4 to 14. The second shepherd was to demonstrate how God would give over his people to evil shepherds, verse 15 to 17. 
Let's continue reading and then we'll have a look at Ezekiel 34 then. The two shepherds. Thus saith the Lord, my God, feed the flock of the slaughter, whose possessors slay them and hold them not guilty. But, and they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. But lo, I will deliver the men, every one into his neighbour's hand, and into the hand of his king. And they shall smite the land, and out of their hand I will not deliver them. And I will feed the flock of slaughter, even you, O poor of the flock. And I took unto me two staves, two staffs. The one I called beauty, and the other I called bands, and I fed the flock. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month, and my soul loathed them, and their souls also abhorred them. Then said I, I will not feed you that dieth, let, uh, let it die, and that there is to be cut off. Let it be cut off, and let the rest eat every one of the flesh of another. Sounds sounds a bit right. So let's 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 read a bit of more of the explanation of that. It's a tough little scripture to read this one, isn't it? God told Zechariah to take a job as a shepherd of a flock of sheep being fattened up for butchering. That the Messiah would strengthen God's people during a time of spiritual and political confusion. That's what I said to you earlier. This is what stood out to me when I read this at first, was that we are going through a spiritual and political confusion that's going on in the world at the moment with COVID-19 and all the other things that are happening, riots, race riots, and all these other things that are happening in the world today. God's saying here that God will be with us and he will strengthen us. He will strengthen the Messiah, would strengthen God's people during a time of spiritual and political confusion. Now this, in Zechariah, was also referring to what was going on between Israel and Judah and all the other things that were happening in their day, where they were sold into slavery and they were, they were taken in slavery and there were all of these things happening to them and persecution. But God was going to judge Lebanon and the other places and Bashan and these places and burn them down and destroy them because there had been false shepherds, there had been false pastors, false, false a pastor is another name for a shepherd, and uh, is a shepherd, but also we talked about the, the other day, a shepherd could be a king, a leader, a priest, a prophet, anyone that's in a role that leads other people. You know, and tra teaches and trains other people. Let's just have a look at Ezekiel for a minute. Ezekiel, none of this is, is easy to explain and to study. So I pray that God will show you his word as well as he's re as I'm studying this today. Sounds as if I'm a bit rambling on because I'm learning something out of this too, just like everybody else. Ezekiel chapter 34. Oh, I got it straight away. Israel is God's flock. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do not feed them, that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherd be feeding his flock? Very true. And it seems like at the difficult times at the moment, pastors have been unable to feed the flock unless they're able to preach and teach online like this. But, uh, you know, there's far more to being a shepherd or a pastor than just preaching. There's actually spending time with different people, listening to their problems and difficulties and helping them and praying with them. So I pray that as now we may be allowed to start opening for private prayer, or churches for private contemplative prayer, prayer, within the social distancing rules, pray that God will move in a mighty way, that we can start doing things that God wants us to be doing again. You know, let's look at that again. Let's say, because God, there were false ones, there were false prophets, false teachers, 
that they're in it for the money and everything else and they can get greedy for gain. But God wants us to be humble and depend on him and not beg our people for money. God is the one who provides. God says, I shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. This is what I see in this anyway. This was talking about shepherds who were feeding themselves and not feeding the flock. You eat the fat and you clothe yourself with the wool. You kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. The diseased have you not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick. Yeah, that's a true point. I was asked by somebody um, a couple of weeks ago, a dear friend of mine, why is it the pastors are not allowed to, can, can't do what they're called to do and lay hands on the sick? That began me thinking again, because I, I was isolated and I wasn't ministering to people and I had to repent, as I said before God, and realise, like today, I've shook hands with people today. I've done fist bumps with people today, right? But with the fear of this COVID-19, People are not doing that, and people need physical contact as well as physic, you know, physical touch. It means an awful lot to people, and they need that comfort and care. But as I say, with this COVID-19, people are not allowed to hug one another and do things. And these people are desperate. Some people don't see anybody from week on end or day on a day, and they're lonely, they're heartbroken, they, they feel rejected. And sometimes all they need is somebody to just shake a hand or touch. Of course, go wash your hands after. Do all the right things. But we must be careful that we are not looking after our flocks and healing the sick. I mean, we were praying for people before this and we were laying hands on the sick. We were seeing people healed and delivered. But we need to, the enemy is trying to stop us doing all those things. Because if we are God's people and we believe in Psalm 91 and we are doing what God has asked us to do, no plague will come nigh out of Ireland. That's what this says in Psalm 91. And we need to trust and fully in God and start doing the things that we, we used to do. Or if we weren't doing them before, we need to do them more now. We need to pray for people, lay hands on the sick, believe God's word. Because you know, if, if you are doing what God says is right, you will not become sick because of it, because God's word promises he will protect you. And we read in note that God will strengthen us. He will strengthen, lead, strengthen the people and he will help them. You know, I mean, at the moment, everybody seems to be being exploited by all this, that and the other. But we need to turn to God and help them and comfort them and bring them peace. Because God wants us to know, show him, show others his peace. We need to be good shepherds. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads us beside still waters, he restores our soul, he heals our wounds. You know, a shepherd in the years ago would carry some oil and some wine. And if a, if a sheep had been ill, they'd pour in the oil and the wine to bring healing. And we need to be pouring on the oil of the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit and get back out there and start doing what we're supposed to be doing. And if we get persecuted for it, then we'll get persecuted for it. We must stand up and be counted. And, you know, the sheep were scattered, it goes on in this chapter, uh, verse 5, and they were scattered because there is no shepherd and they cannot, they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for my flock. But the shepherds fed themselves and not fed not my flock. Therefore, O shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand. We are responsible. God will hold us accountable if we are not doing our work as shepherds. 
and fulfilling our calling and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherd feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. Um, I'm looking at the footnotes for Ezekiel on this. There's quite a lot more if you want to read this and study it in your own time. Bad shepherds are good shepherds. Bad shepherds take care of themselves. Good shepherds take care of the flock. Bad shepherds worry about their own health. I point a finger. I pointed five fingers at myself. I was doing that, and it's wrong. Strengthen the weak. A good shepherd strengthens the weak and the sick. Search for the lost. That's a good shepherd. A bad shepherd rule harshly and brutally. Good shepherds lovingly rule lovingly and gently. We carry our people when they're down. We carry them in prayer and ministry. If we're not meeting our flock, we cannot minister to them. Okay, we can talk on the phone, but it's not the same as face-to-face -face contact and physical contact with the person. Oh, God, forgive me, you know. And uh, bad shepherds abandon or scatter the sheep. A good shepherd gathers and protects the sheep. Keep the best, uh, bad shepherds keep the best for themselves. Oof. A good shepherd gives their best to the sheep. Let's go back to Zechariah. That's a whole study on itself. Um, verse 4 we were looking at. God told Zechariah to take a job as a shepherd of a flock of sheep being fattened for butchering. God often used the, the prophets. They actually had to physically put into practice in their own lives what God was trying to show the rest of the people. Was it Hosea who had to marry a prostitute and then she left and ran away and he had to go and buy her back? That's exactly how we can be with God. We can be, you know, we can be unfaithful to God and go back, but God still comes and seeks for us and still wants to restore us and bring us back to himself. And as a shepherd, we must care for our flock. Verse 7 we read is, And I will feed the flock of slaughter, even you, O poor of the flock. And I took unto me two staves, the one I call beauty and the one I call bands, and I fed the flock. Zechariah took two shepherd's staffs and turned them beauty, or another word for it was grace, and bands, he called the other staff, or union. Yeah, good one. We need to remember God's beauty or God's grace for us. That while we were sinners here, Christ died for us, even though we didn't deserve it. And we should not be divided, we should be standing together as one in union. He broke the first one, beauty or grace, to show that God's gracious covenant with his people was broken. Yeah. So often God's made a covenant with us and we break it ourselves. He doesn't break his covenant. We break it with him. We're unfaithful to him. And then he broke the second one, Corbans or Union, to show that the brotherhood between Judah and Israel was broken. It was sad that during the time of Jeroboam and uh, the Jeroboam after Solomon and that, and those days where the kingdom was divided, Judah and Jerusalem, brothers were divided against brother. And we need to be careful we're not divided against one another. We may have different views or different opinions, but we still should be united together and be like that staff union and bring back everybody united together. We all have one common purpose and that's to preach the gospel and to reach the lost. We may have different gifts and abilities and different ways of doing it, but we still must be united with the same purpose under heaven. There should be no difference even with our churches and denominations. We all have a speciality in one particular area of ministry. Well, another brother, another church may have a different one than ours. But if we all try to work together under one banner and we serve God together, there will be more work achieved. And 
And you at the other church, I was only discussing with this with a brother yesterday, may have special gift in a ministry that we may not have any experience of. And we can learn from each other. We can learn from that church and to learn to do things in the in a different way, maybe. We've got to be open to bring that union back and to, you know, and not have a broken staff, like a union broken, as the example is of Jeroboam and, and uh, you know, the kingdom divided in the time after Solomon and the north and south divided. Uh, to show that brotherhood between Judah and Israel was broken. And that show, you can read that in verse 14. Uh, verse 8 goes on to say, The identity of the three she evil shepherds is not known, but God know, knew they were unfit to shepherd his people, so he removed them. And God will always remove someone that isn't right. For example, he removed Saul, the king, King Saul. And he gave David, he put David in his place because Saul wasn't a good shepherd, a good leader. Um, it makes me think of Eli and his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. I think that's the names. They were robbing from the temple. They were sleeping with prostitutes and they were supposed to be high priests in the temple. They were priests in uh, Shiloh. And God told Eli to tell them to stop doing it, but he didn't put anything into action. They should have been thrown out of their office until they repented and turned back to God. But then he warned them through Samuel that he was going to destroy them, and he did on the battlefield. Uh, when they had to take the, the ark out, of, I think it was to fight the Philistines. You could read that in the book of Samuel, you know. And that, that's another shepherd who failed in his ministry. David did for it to a certain extent. Where David, you know, had an affair with another man's wife. Then he had that man killed so he could be with his wife, Bathsheba, I think it was. If you study the scriptures, everything you will see, you will find there are three shepherds. I don't know if it's the three shepherds referred to here, but there are many other shepherds that have gone off track, lost their way, and gone back into sin and led the nations into sin with them. So we need to be careful of that. We don't know the identity of these three evil shepherds, but we do know there are many of them recorded in the scripture. And so God will remove them from their positions. 11, chapter 11, verse 10 and 11. Because Israel had re rejected the good shepherd, God broke the staff called beauty for all grace, thereby revoking his agreement to protect his people. I see this as the fact when Jesus first came in as Messiah, they rejected him. But when he comes as, as judge, they'll have no choice. to They won't be able to reject him there. They can't deny that he is who he says he is and does what he says he'll do. But that's the time that's come in. That seems like a future prophecy to me. Of his first coming and maybe his second coming. Because Israel rejected the good shepherd, God broke the staff called beauty or grace, thereby revoking the agreement to protect his people. Because they disobeyed him, his hand of protection was taken away. And the tribes were scattered of Israel, weren't they? I know uh, we're coming to an age where some of them are re re coming back. The diaspora and all these things, they're coming back to Israel. But, you know, God will restore them, but he allows, he'll allow us to go our own way for a while until we come to the end of ourselves and find that the things are wrong and that we need to repent and come to know, come back to him. Then we can come back under his protection. Verse 12. To pay the shepherd 30 pieces of silver mentions in here, was an insult. This was the price paid, paid to an owner for a slave going to death by an ox. In Exodus 21 verse 32, if you were an animal when and killed somebody else, a slave or whatever, you had to pay 30 pieces of silver in damages. That's what it's talking about in that context. This also is the amount Judas received for betraying Jesus. 
You can read that in Matthew 27, verse 3 to 10. And the priceless Messiah was sold for the price of a slave. A slave was worth 30 pieces of silver in those days. Ah, and they sold Christ for 30 pieces of silver. He was betrayed and sold to the leader so he could be hung on that cross for us. Verse 11, uh, verse 14. Let's read that. Uh, let me read this. And it talks, and, and I took my staff and in beauty. I read that. And it was broken in that day. And so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. And I said unto them, If you think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. For they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was prized at of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. This is amazing, isn't it, when you think about this? Judas... When he betrayed Jesus, he took the 30 pieces of silver. But when he realised what he had done, he took it back and he threw it at the feet of the scribes and the Pharisees and the priests or whatever. And um, put the 30 pieces of silver. And they bought a potter's field out of it. And there he hung himself in the potter's field. Let's read a bit. To pay the shepherd, right? So the priceless Messiah was sold for the price of a slave. Potters were in the lowliest, lowest social class. The goodly price, a sarcastic comment that was, right, was so little that it could be thrown to the potter. It is significant that the 30 pieces of silver paid to Judas for betraying Jesus was returned to the temple and used to buy the potter's field. Matthew 27, verse 3 to 10. Just quoted that. Verse 14. And, and he sarcastic to the potter, a goodly price that I was prized at the, of them. I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Then I cast asunder my other staff, even bands, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. See, that was the divider. Because they were unfaithful to God, they were divided. Verse 15, And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that is broke, that, that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still, but he shall eat the flesh of the fat, and tear their claws in pieces. Woe to the idle shepherd! That leaveth the flock, the sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye, for his arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. Ooh, powerful. This is convicting too, if you're not do fulfilling your call and your ministry, and you're not doing what God's called you to do, whatever circumstances that are going on around you, we still have to do as God says and be obedient to him. Verse 17 commented here, it says, It is a tragedy for God's people when their leaders fail to care for them adequately. God holds leaders particularly accountable for the condition of these people. The New Testament tells church leaders, Be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. What does that mean? If we fail to help and to care and support our flock or to correct them or to guide them, then we are accountable for them. We are responsible and we will be judged by God if we don't speak up and say what God puts on our hearts. James 3 verse 1. If God puts you in a position of leadership, remember that it's also a place of greater responsibility. I've heard this said as well. I can say it's lonely at the top. Because not everybody will like you or agree with the things you are saying or do or teaching. But you have to remain faithful to God. Like Jeremiah and the other prophets, they have to make their stand. Whether it's harsh or it seems hard, you have to stand up and be counted. And do what God has told you to do. 
Wow, this is a powerful message today. This is a challenging message today. Talking about our shep the shepherds that uh, maybe not doing what they should be doing. And I want to be doing what God wants me to be doing and speaking and encouraging and praying and ministering to the people. So God pray for our government that our things would change so we could we could be free to do it without uh, the consequences of being arrested or whatever. We must still be faithful even if that doesn't change and we must minister to the flock. Even put in our Lord, you know, the good shepherd always put his life at risk for the flock. See, David, when he was a shepherd and looking after his father's flock, a lion came and a bear, and he had to fight them and overcome them. He could have been killed himself trying to protect the flock. And we must do that as men and women of God. Verse 15 to 17, we were talking about the Antichrist is a false shepherd, and he will come and pretend everything's hunky-dory and okay, but then he will turn and bite like a snake. You think it's okay, then all of a sudden, snap, he has you. And we have to be very careful and watch him for the second coming of Christ. I spoke to a brother today and he, said, he reminded me of something I said back a year or two ago. I can't even remember saying it in a men's Bible study. That we were going to begin to experience some terrible, difficult times. But we must hold fast and hold up pace and trust in God. Even I failed in this at times, and I haven't trusted in God fully. And yet we must be careful that we now have an opportunity to turn our lives back to God. Thank you, God, for forgiving my sins and giving me a fresh start. So tomorrow now we look at the second burden, prophetic aspects connected with the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But guys, that's a tough one today. He talks about the potter's field and he talks about shepherds, good shepherds and bad shepherds. And a God being a good shepherd. Uh, we've, we've discussed Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Let's read that before we close today's message because, you know, we need to think of God as our shepherd, as our guide. And he loves and cares for us and he wants the best for us. And he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And sometimes we leave him. We walk out of his will and purpose. We stop doing what we're called to do. And then he leaves us go away for a while until we hit our rock bottoms. As I learned when I was an alcoholic and uh, going through recovery, we need to hit a rock bottom before we can get back up. That's one of the sayings that they used to say. Let's read Psalm 23 before we close. Oh, I love this psalm. It's my favourite, as, as many other people's favourite. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. I was there at the church today, and I was sitting behind the counter in the shop. And I just wanted to take some time, and I had some worship music on. And I felt the peace of God, you know, in the stillness at the time. We can experience God's stillness as we wait before him, as we learned the other day. Be still and know that I am God. Besides the still waters, he restores my soul. He restored me in that time, sitting there today behind our counter, you know. Everybody else was doing their packing food and getting everything ready to go out. And I sat there for two minutes, closed my eyes, and just worshipped God. And the song was, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Light in the Darkness. My God, that is who you are. Let's carry on with this as well. He restored my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we may feel like we've been going through a valley, a dark valley of shadow, of late, but the Lord says uh, to tell you that uh, we must not fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Praise God. Thou prepares a table before me in the prayer presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. 
Surely, goodness and mercy, we read about grace and that and the staffs, didn't we? One was beauty and grace and the other one was bands and unity. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There's another psalm that says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in your house than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Lord, we come before you again. We ask you, Lord, to open our churches fully, that we can bring people in again and begin to minister them, Lord, in a fresh, new way, under the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for anyone who watches these videos. If anything that I've said today is pulled a cord, Lord, or a string in their lives, Lord, that they would turn to you, put it right, Lord, as I've had to do the same thing, and I'm still doing it, Lord. Lord, because I want to walk holy before you and right with you, and I want to be a good shepherd, guiding people, loving people, upholding them in prayer and in ministry. Lord, I thank you that you have brought me through this trial again. Lord, and I pray that anyone I've hurt or upset during this time, Lord, that you would heal them and you would bless them, Lord, as I have repented of what my actions too haven't been very good. I've been quite judgmental to a certain extent. Although I've shared your word, Lord, I've still been unfaithful within my heart. So I pray, Lord, that you will minister to me as you minister to those who hear the word, that we would not become just hearers of your word, we become doers of your word. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. I pray for our government, Lord, that you would be with them. I pray for those who are caring for others. But Lord, I particularly pray for those, Lord, who are suffering with mental health issues at the moment, that this COVID-19, this period of isolation, this time, has done so much damage. Lord, I pray, Lord, as we open up things again, that we, as Christian believers, will be able to minister and encourage and build up these people. That they should, that they will, that that you will help us to minister to them. That they realise that they don't need to be very lonely. That we are out there too for them, and we experience the same things as they experience. But yet, Lord, we have you to trust in. And Lord, help us to put our full trust in you. Pray for your protection now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, guys, that's a little bit longer than I have done the, the, this week's one. It's 37 minutes, just about. But I pray that it's not too long and that you will be able to get something out of it. And you will be encouraged and you will be developed in your faith. Please, as I say after every video, please read these scriptures yourself that I've quoted. Check them out for yourself. Look at the world today. Go on YouTube, Google, search Find out about the things that I've talked about over the last few weeks and months. It's all there for you to read. Be careful what you accept to be true. Make sure you make sure it's right with God. Test every spirit. And don't believe every word I say, because I get it wrong. But believe this, God's word. Because that's the only truth you're going to hear today out there in the world. You want to hear the truth of the media? You may not hear the truth from our government and our leaders, but this is the truth. I am the way, the truth and the life, says Jesus. No man cometh, cometh unto the Father, lest he come through me. So, in Jesus' name, I pray a blessing upon you. If you need prayer and you need support, I'm available. I'm here. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Amen.